Hey everybody, Jem Schofield of the C47 and another episode of Gearbox 2.0. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at a little bit more footage from the Fujifilm X-T4 pre-production model. So let's get started. All right, kids, it's another week and this is not gonna be as long of an episode as last week, but what I thought would be a good idea would be to show a little bit more footage from what I shot with the pre-production model of the X-T4. It is a camera I'm very excited about and while there's not a lot of footage to look at, there's a little bit more than I had in last week's episode, which was really focused on talking about the camera body and the menus and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is actually pop over to my computer. The VO part of this is gonna sound a lot different because I'm gonna be using a different mic in a different space, but that way I can talk out just a few thoughts on this. Again, this is not gonna be a super long episode, but for people who are new to the channel, please subscribe. There's going to be a lot more X-T4 content in the future. In fact, I'm working really, really hard right now to get another pre-production unit in-house so I can create some more content in and around the camera, along with some other lenses like the MKX lenses. And what I wanna do is keep all of that focus to video. I wanna keep it to how we're using the camera in production. And again, I'm very excited about that. So let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit of footage with some comments on that, and then I'll bounce back for the outro. One of the things I wanted to do in this video is spend a fair amount of time talking about film simulations, because unlike a lot of other camera systems, with the X-T4 and also the X-T3, you're either gonna be shooting internally or externally using F-Log, or you're gonna be using one of the film simulations. So this is Provia Standard, which is ideal for a wide range of subjects, or so says Fujifilm. And you can see here the difference between two different shots in two different locations. This is Velvia Vivid, and Fujifilm says this is for vibrant reproduction, ideal for landscape and nature. This is Astia Soft, softer color and contrast for a more subdued look. This is Classic Chrome, which is absolutely one of my favorites. Soft color and enhanced shadow contrast for a calm look. And I'm a big fan of black and white photography and classic chrome for chroma-based or color-based stuff is absolutely one of my favorites. This is ProNeg High, ideal for portrait with slightly enhanced contrast. This is ProNeg Standard, ideal for portraits with soft gradations and skin tones. This is the brand new Classic Neg, which was originally introduced in the X-Pro3. This for me is something that I have not shot with yet with people in the frame, but I'd like to try that. And then we have Eterna Cinema, which is designed for soft color and rich shadow tones suitable for film look movie. It's a great look. And when you combine that with going into the menus and changing your dynamic range to 400%, when you're shooting outside especially or when you want to retain highlights, it can be a good alternative to shooting in F-Log. And then along with Classic Neg, this is the other new film simulation that you have in the X-T series, and it's called Eterna Bleach Bypass. And it's really a high contrast, low saturation look, and you can see here that it's very, very different than the other film simulations. So let's talk about IBIS for a minute or two. And this is something that I still need to spend a lot more time with, with the camera. And again, a pre-production model. So we don't know if there's gonna be some changes in the final shipping product. But if you take a look at these clips here, we're getting a really nice image stabilization with the IBIS. I'm not using OIS, this is a prime lens. But you'll see that when I'm panning left, that there's that little jerk movement there that's happening, and I did notice that happening with the camera. Now again, part of this is operator and getting used to that IBIS system. I also didn't use the IS boost mode inside of the camera. I didn't use that because I was always moving the camera, but once I get the X-T4 back, I wanna check that out as well. 
Also, if you go into the menu and you choose a focal length for the mount adapter setting in the camera, this should assist as well with your in-body image stabilization. I've got one shot in here, which is low light. And if I remember correctly, I was shooting at 3200 ISO. I like what I'm seeing. It is pleasing in terms of the slight noise that you're seeing here in the image. Now it's time to talk a little bit about slow motion. So this is 4K 60p and inside of the camera this really isn't much different than what you had in the X-T3. I've got the camera on a gimbal and I'm just going over these pottery pieces at different speeds. So when you look at these two different clips the speed difference is not the conform in post. They're still conform to 40% to play back at 23.98 or 23.976 to be more accurate. But they just show you kind of what the slow motion looks like with the correct shutter speed set on the camera at 120th. Let's take a look at this. We've got this clip here. This is handheld and this is just 120 frames per second, so it's only in HD, very clean. Now this shot is shot at 120 frames per second handheld, and happy with this, uh, using IBIS, and it's very, very clean. Of course, it's now only 1080p, but if you start to look at the wheels, you'll see a slight more, and then here we are going to 240 frames per second at a 500th in terms of shutter speed and the moray is even more pronounced and you can especially see it when I take this f-log footage and I apply a LUT to it in post-production. So there you go some additional footage from the X-T4 some of it was in the last video but you're getting a little more commentary on it and again not a long episode Working hard to get that camera back in-house to create more content for you. Subscribe to the channel. Tap that bell if you want notifications. Definitely new content coming every Wednesday on the channel. And I'll see you guys next time on Gearbox.